Outwintering livestock on forage crops and fair grazing can be a cost-effective method of managing animals during the winter months. However, during this time, if feeds are managed poorly, outwintering can potentially increase the risk of soil damage and nutrient loss. In the UK, cross-compliance legislation does require that farmers take action to try and avoid any potential soil damage. As a result, good feed management during the winter period is an absolutely essential component of any successful outwintering system. Of course, good feed management starts very much at the planning stage. Selecting sites with free draining soils and gentle slopes and carefully planning infrastructure can go a long way to helping reduce the potential soil damage. However, it's important to remember that during the winter months, feed conditions can change and we need to carefully manage our soils during this time. If we look at our soils, our soils are typically made up of about 45% mineral particles, 5% organic matter, 25% water and 25% air. However, what happens during the winter months is that these ratios change and much of the air in the soil is replaced by water. As soils become increasingly saturated, the risk of surface runoff or water moving across the surface of the soil also increases. This surface runoff is an effective pathway by which nutrients and soil are transported from the field onto adjacent land, into rivers and lakes, or in worst case scenarios, onto roads and highways. As soil moisture levels increase, so too does the potential risk of soil compaction. As soil becomes wetter, what we see is that the friction between individual particles of soil actually decreases. This means the particles can move past each other much more freely. When we apply a force to the surface of the soil, such as an animal treading or machinery traffic, this causes deformation of the soil further down the soil profile. As a result, this squeezes all the air out of the soil, leaving it compacted and potentially increasing the risk of surface runoff. How we manage fields during the wintering period can have a large bearing on both soil damage and nutrient loss. In fact, research from New Zealand has shown that when forage crop fields are strategically grazed to minimise soil damage, surface runoff, nitrogen loss and phosphorus loss were all reduced by as much as 80%. When grazing to minimise soil damage, there are a number of aspects to consider. These include grazing direction, the length of time that an area of a field is grazed, infrastructure such as back fencing, and also how we can reduce traffic across the field. The direction in which a field is grazed can have a significant impact on runoff generation and soil loss. It's important to graze from the top of the field moving down the slope over time. By doing this, the plants that have not been grazed act as a buffer, slowing down any surface runoff and allowing time for the water to infiltrate into the soil. This is a very effective way of retaining vital soil and nutrients within the field boundary. The longer the period of time animals spend grazing a set area of land, the greater the potential risk of soil compaction. As a result, it's really important to offer animals fresh forage on a daily basis in both the fair grazing and in forage crop situations. This moves animals across the field slightly quicker onto new areas of land and decreases the potential for soil compaction. Timing of grazing wetter areas of the field is particularly important when thinking about soil damage. Grazing these areas of land, which can be prone to waterlogging, should be done earlier in the season and for short periods of time during the day, perhaps two to three hours, to minimise any potential risk of soil damage. In very wet conditions, on-off grazing can be an effective strategy for reducing soil damage. This involves giving animals access to the crop, for two to three hours a day before moving them on to another area of land or onto a standoff pad. However, if choosing to on off graze, it's very important that a good infrastructure network is there to be able to move animals easily and freely on and off the crop. When managing either deferred grazing or forage crops, regular back fencing is a useful technique to avoid soil damage. Erecting a back fence will prevent further compaction on previously grazed areas of land and will allow the soil structure to recover. Aim to back fence areas every four to five days. Good infrastructure is also important when minimising soil damage and considering surface runoff. Travelling regularly through outwintering fields can create channels for water to flow down, increasing the potential risk of surface runoff. As a result, it's important to have a good network of tracks and laneways. 
In addition, aiming to minimise any machinery traffic across fields during the outwintering period is important. This can be done by placing supplementary forages in fields prior to grazing, when the soil is dry and more trafficable. Regularly moving feed troughs and water sources can be a good way to minimise soil damage in the winter months. In addition to this, temporary water reservoirs should be easily accessible by a good network of tracks. In addition, maintaining good infrastructure will allow for the easy movement of animals on and off the field as required. Finally, it's always important to have a backup strategy in place to minimise any potential soil damage that might occur because of adverse weather conditions. For more information on managing fields during the outwintering period, visit the website.